take a step back in time three years ago to when I first got this tank. This was an office tank. The point was I needed something a little more stable than my innovative Marine Nouveau Fusion 8 gallon aquarium. I decided to go with black sand and a really open aquascape. Now I actually did add rocks later. Uh, this is just kind of the setup and the early cycling of everything. But in the back there you can see I have an Ecotech Marine Quiet Drive MP10. I decided to go all out with flow on this build, something that I later decided I didn't need to sink more money in my pump than I actually had in my tank. Something to keep in mind. But the pump worked well, it was beautiful, and uh, I did enjoy it while I had it. In the back I also left a lot of room in order to make sure that all the wires would fit and I used my Tunzi auto top off. The inside of the stand had plenty of wires which I sorted out later and I found this five gallon container that I used for a auto top off reservoir that fit perfectly in the stand. Now for the light I used the Aqua Illumination Prime and this was a fun light I really liked it but it did collect a little bit of dust on the top screen but as far as color rendition in the tank it was absolutely excellent it did cause a little bit of aliasing sometimes when recording with a cell phone. So what did I do for the rock formation? Well, I called this the pile of rocks design. And this had to be the worst design ever. But I think I had some rocks. I had too many rocks. Plus I had the rocks from my old tank to help seed it. And it was just too much. But overall, it still... Yeah, it's, it was nice, but it still needed something. The sand, the black sand, though, looked really cool. I liked the black sand with the, the back of the tank, and this was early enough in the tank's life that it didn't get too much detritus in it. In the end, it would be kind of speckled with lighter colored detritus, but it's the ocean, right? It's supposed to look a little bit different. I had this concept of maybe doing a macro algae garden, I added some dragon's breath algae and those different types of red algaes, but they didn't really take off in this tank, um, so I ended up scrapping that idea as well. So version 2 of the tank had a new rock structure. I took out the big rock wall and I made two separate structures. You can also see a lot more of that black sand when it's set up like this. you also notice on the left side I have a Kessel A160 to complement my aqua illumination prime on the other side. And I wanted to do a comparison between the two lights. Ultimately, the only difference was visual and the fact that the aqua illumination light caused this aliasing effect with my cell phone, whereas the Kessel was easy to film with no problem. The Coral, though, both grew just as well. There you can see that effect. So then I got a little bit sloppy and I took a lot of travel. I don't know, maybe I was gone up to two weeks and had some people helping me, but really it's really difficult when you're away to keep a tank clean and I had this big massive algae outbreak but that's okay I cleaned it all up and ended up having a much better looking tank I put some SPS on each side because I wanted to see if those lights could handle the SPS ultimately this tank wasn't super great for SPS uh, just because of the constraints on my time and maintaining it um, it basically the SPS did really well for a period of time while I was paying a lot of attention and then I did some more travel again and I lost it but this this image right here this is kind of the glory of this portion of the tanks life and what is really striking I think is the coralline algae against the black background and the black sand it's very very uh, appealing and you can see how the sand has some little white flakes in there. That doesn't bother me at all. I think you still get the really nice dark effect. You can clean the sand, but you're never going to get all those little colorful flakes out. So what I recommend is if that doesn't bother you, then get it. It looks awesome. But if it does, go with some regular sand or go with bare bottom. Over time, the lights were still doing really good. And I think that at this point, the tank was cruising really, really well. Here's one last clip of the tank in this phase just so you can see it in all its glory. It was just stunning. I absolutely love the tank at this point in time. The lights were super well calibrated for the types of coral there. 
maybe a little weak for some of the SPS, but overall it just looked stunning. So lazy reefer syndrome struck again and the tank kind of got out of shape, but the colors were really popping at this point. The Zoas really liked the light combination. If you look on either side of the tank, all the coral loves the light that's being provided regardless of the manufacturer. So this was going good, but it was time for change. So I took the tank home and wow, look at this aquarium. I put a lot of work into making everything really pop. I added a lot of coral for my other tanks. I had just taken down my deep blue professional tank. And so there's tons of coral. It was a Zoa focus and I got those new lights in there on top, those Kessel A. 80s and those were great because they're fanless they're completely silent and the light just beamed down on the corals and at a hundred percent it was perfect for the zoas in most areas of the tank and also the anemone did fine high up so this looked good at any angle from above looks great from the front looks great you could even look at it from any angle on the sides and it was just cool sitting up there in my apartment now the anemones did good, so I knew there was plenty of light. I added some fish, small nano fish, that would really take it easy in that tank and be relaxed, and the whole thing just looked awesome. Now after one month of no maintenance, uh, the biggest problem that I had was the glass was getting kind of gross. It was hard to see in and hard to film, uh, but it did pretty well this point why I made it the ultra low maintenance tank I actually didn't have any fish in it it was a coral only live rock with coral instead of a fowler it is well coral only with live rock cowler a cowler tank I don't mind those kind of tanks I think it's uh it's better to have coral than fish in my mind but this is a reef aquarium channel and it did fine the fish definitely lowered the bio load made it very easy to literally do almost nothing uh, not even feed anything other than giving that anemone a little bit of nutrition now and then. And wow, if you want something that's easy, do something like this. But I think overall, it just, without fish, it does miss something, some sparks, some joy, something special. And that really makes it a reef because what makes reef aquariums beautiful is the interaction with all of the species including the invertebrates and the fish and the coral and so while the super all-out low maintenance experiment without even fish so not even you know really touching it for food within five days at a time it it was a good experience but I would not do it again you gotta have fish and of course I had snails and little guys running around but then I let the tank grow up more. I started using it as a very comfortable quarantine for my fish um, to just kind of observe them before doing a copper treatment if I needed to do that before I put it into my main tank. And that worked pretty well. So let's look at that. So here's the tank in its final days. It was still a very low bio load tank. I would use it when I was bringing fish in to fatten them up before I put them in a more a strict type of quarantine with some sort of treatment. One fish that I really wanted to make sure was eating well was this purple tang and now this fish is super hardy. But if you can just look at this tank, the colors, the amount of coral that it supports, it's amazing. There's no skimmer in this tank. There's no sump in this tank. It is just running two Kessel A80 lights, I'll bet at 100%, but those were enough to provide all of the light that this tank needs. And so it just shows what you can accomplish with a very, very simple setup, which is why I really like these all-in-one tanks for kind of a starter tank. But this tank was gorgeous. I really enjoyed it. And this is how it should have ended with the most beautiful coral. And now all this coral is in my main display. So thank you very much for joining me on this episode of Puff Daddy Reef. And next week is going to be exciting because we will be back talking about sharks. I'll update you on how the shark tank's doing. Also, I really, really need some more name ideas. I've got a lot of great ones. I will be discussing name ideas 
and hopefully revealing a name next week. So get your awesome name ideas in the comments below. If you have any other questions for me about this tank, please also leave those comments below. And also check out the links to these Kessel A80 lights and some other things in the description. Thank you very much for joining me. Happy reefing and have a great Sunday.